I used to, I used to stress, I used to stress him. Really? Remember, yeah, I used to yeah, kept, yeah. I kept stressing like him. I kept stressing him about doing a verse on on um. on the ride. Was on the ride. Yeah, I never when I when he said it to me. That yo, was first off, Royce did it? the hook. It was it was two, it was it was the same verse. Two verses. But you were just doing the hook. <coughs> okay. And you were like, oh, I want you to do this hook. I was like, I was like, who's singing it? You said, it's me singing. I was like, Nick, you sound actually pretty good singing it. <laughs> he sounded good. I mean, he hit the Michael Jackson high note and all that shit. It was, it was dope. <laughs> Yo, oh, he really you know, you did that? He did that. Well, I'm not you me. Well, I did right. it on the version that's right, right, right. He did it on the record. Right. And the shit worked. I was yeah. like, nigga, you good. <laughs> but, you know, it, it was like, like, it was like mad graphic though. Like, he was like, that's more your style. Let me, let me yeah, the original word was like, I've been around, I fucked a lot of girls. I was just like, yo, I don't know if people will buy that from me. Like, <laughs> they think I'm the cousin rap. Like, I got kids, but they think I adopt them. Well, like, they don't think I'm, I'm a fat motherfucker. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm a fat motherfucker. I fucked a lot of girls, so they'll believe it. What's up, y'all? I'm DJ Premier, a.k.a. And you're checking out thestash.com. Yo, 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 what up? It's Fonte, Nutigolo, Nutigolo, Nutigolo. And you are checking out thestash.com, all right? Peace. What up, what up? This your man Royce the 5'9, and right now you're checking out thestash.com. Schedule two interviews at the same time, but you know, they all fuck with each other, so we don't make it work. <laughs> and we're on an album, and we're on an album together. <laughs> yes, and they're on an the album together. So, you know, Royce the 5'9, DJ Premier, Fonte. The first time seeing each other since 2007. Man, first time. I can't believe it's, it's been that long. It's been man. a long time. It's great just like that. Yeah. Yeah. The, time, the time goes by really fast. Tell me about the first time you, you all you all met together or just like, you know, made music together. Um, the first time that we met, the first time I actually met Royce, mm -hmm. this was, um, oh my God, this was 2000. Four, five. No, this was around since 2005. Mm -hmm. um, we were mixing the minstrel show at Baseline, or what used to be Baseline uh, yeah. in New York. Yeah, and uh, my man was like, yo, uh, Royce is coming through. I was like, like Royce, five, nine Royce? Mm -hmm. I didn't think he knew who the fuck we were. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He was like, Royce coming I was like, oh, shit, all right. Uh -huh. So he just came through and, you know, uh, dab each other. I'm like, good, nigga, what's up? You know, and uh, his manager, uh, Kino, at the time, I don't know if yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, we met and stuff, and so we had a work relationship from there, and uh, we ended up touring together and, and all that. And uh, but that was 05 when we first actually met. Um, I actually first met this guy. Mm. Oh my <laughs> god, I was um, this was 2002. Mm -hmm. This was at the Knitting Factory. Knitting Factory. Did you already say Knitting Factory? It was Knitting Factory. This mm -hmm. was a guru. No, the original one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they moved Chris, now, so they've been in Brooklyn, but the original This is originally downtown on the west side, yeah. Yeah, we were there, and so we had, it was like a showcase, and um, a Knotts had, Knotts was there with DMP. Knotts. Um, yeah, the year round. Yeah, he had year round. Yeah, he had the year round showcase, and I remember Guru was there with him. Rest in peace. I'll mm -hmm. never forget this. So we were walking up to the to the dressing room, and I saw Preem. As soon as I saw, as soon as I turned the corner, I saw Preem, and I was just like, I mean, I didn't even know what to say. I was just like, man, just thank you for the music, and I never gave his response. He was like, yo, son, yo, I only did two records in my life, son. Only two records in my life. So <laughs> you know what I mean? That was just something where we met, and Guru was there, and we talked, and he sat us down and he was just like, yo, man, like y'all are leaders, like be, you know, what you stay with it. You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. um, that really, I never forgot that night. I remember this shit like it was last week. Mm. It was just uh, a big moment for me. So yeah, me and these guys go back a long way. That's crazy. That's crazy that y'all on here at the same time. <laughs> and, then, and, then we, and then he, and he was on the street. Well, I'm mic'd up right now. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Hey, I'm mic'd oh, up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Excuse me. We got wild. We got cordlesses. We got cordlesses. Oh, shit. Y'all boys got all right. Y'all got the goddamn. Y'all got word up. We got cordlesses. I'm the old school nigga. All right. Word up. So you got the, 80, you, you got the 82, yeah. 82 mic. <laughs> now, nah, but uh, but the, the, not only that, we didn't know he was gonna be here. We yeah. just walked in, and then on top of that, he was on. The, I haven't seen him since. Mm -hmm. You hosted the battle in Atlanta. Yeah, with the Red Bull. We did that Atlanta battle, and yeah. I remember you. And I was a judge. Set yeah, I was a judge with uh, the double sword. Yeah, 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 and yeah. I lost my shit. Oh, yeah, my yeah. So, Can yeah. I tell y'all a story? <laughs> <laughs> and this is how this is how you know that Fonte is smarter than me. <laughs> So, do you remember the all hip hop battle? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, yes, I do. Let's speak me, on it. Yes, they called me and told me that it was supposed to be a. It was well, they called it a battle, but mm -hmm. they said that we were going to judge versus. I actually talked to Chuck directly. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chuck, I, I, I did Chuck was the one I was talking to. So Chuck mm -hmm. Smart, right? Yes. Yes. He said it was gonna be you, me. He said it was gonna be me, Fonte, Buttons Joe Budden, Fab. Mm -hmm. Mr. Fab, and he named somebody else that was nice. Oh, where it was okay. Yeah, he was like, and it was because he said them is the reason why I was like with it, because he said y'all not gonna go head to head. It's like y'all gonna stand up, y'all gonna rap verses, and there's gonna be judges to judge y'all verses. I saw the jig, bro. Wow. I saw the jig, <laughs> so I was like, yeah. Man, everybody saw the jig. <laughs> <laughs> everybody saw. I wish I had known him like that back then, so I could have uh, called him and be like, yo, man, what you think about that? Yeah, yeah, because because at the time, yeah, because me and you like we were, I mean. Been talking with Kino yeah, at the time. Yeah. And so Kino had hit my manager at the time was like, yo, was like, is Tay really doing this? He was like, I mean, yeah, I guess. And we didn't really know. So I ended up getting on the phone with, with Chuck. And I was like, okay, so break this down to me. Because the way it was explained to me when the way, the reason why I accepted it was that it was that we were judging the battle. That was how I oh, okay. that was how it came to me. Right. Uh -huh. That it's like, you know, you got okay, a nigga from the south, a nigga from the Midwest, a nigga from the West Coast, East right. Coast nigga. So it ain't no bias. Yes. Right. So y'all from four different parts of the country, y'all gonna judge about battle. That was how it came to me. And, uh, and that was my understanding too, because I, I, I couldn't make it. And mm -hmm. Royce called me and said, yo, it, it, you think this thing's gonna be the day? I said, well, you told me that all you gotta do is spit some ill lines. So I'm just figuring that's all he's gonna do. Mm -hmm. Later on that night, yeah, I'm saying, yo, I'm Mr. Fab guy. <laughs> and I'm yeah, like, what? It's a battle royale. Yeah. I'm up there rapping shit from <laughs> songs I got in the house. <laughs> Rapping about the moon and the stars and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he like, yo, yo, cause I'll kill you like Joey Button, brother. They just got shot. Cause I'm freestyling. You know what I'm saying? And it just is like, I'm sitting there like, man, this is, I can't believe this. He's like, and I, and they was just dropping off one by one. Oh, oh uh, Joe's not gonna make it. Oh yeah, Fonte just dropped off. Yeah, and it was just like it's just y'all two now, man. And I was there, and something told me like Royce turn around and walk out so of that. Door. <laughs> turn around and walk out of that door. You was it crowded? Yeah, I remember it. It was crowded. Of course it was. Yeah, because it was. I remember because the thing was when I talked to Chuck and I told him, I was just like, look, he because he tried to sell it and he was like, nah, it ain't like that. It's not a battle. It's not this. And I'm just like, look, man. I said, let me explain something to you just as an MC, nigga. You don't put Ali and Frazier in a ring and tell them it's just sparring. Right. Yeah. You feel me? Like, right. you don't, like, nigga, what you mean we just sparring? <clears throat> it's judges here. It's right. cameras here. We got on gloves and wraps and shit. Yeah. I'm gonna nigga, we going in. in. You know what I'm saying? So, once I saw that, I was like, Chuck, I said, look, man, I don't think anything good is going to come from this. I told him this. All the time, I was like, yo, I, don't, I know what you think it's going to be, but I can guarantee you it's not going to be that. And he was like, oh, well, I understand. And then, you know, it, he, he, it sold me on it. <laughs> he sold me. He sold me on it. Oh, man. I remember the, the whole time Fab was rapping, I was just thinking to myself, like, what I get myself? I'm being battled right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being battled right now. I'm being battled right now, and I'm not winning. <laughs> What, what am I gonna do? All right, man, man, let me just lay, let me just spit my verses and just go home. And just, <laughs> they got me. They got me. They got me. Um, the project started out as a EP, a five song EP that was supposed to be a slaughterhouse project, uh -huh. and throw it out as a mixtape just to stall while they were finishing that, while they were updating the slaughterhouse album. Uh, and so while you know, just to have some content out, you know, in the meantime. So the but the key was to to sample the music from just one artist to make it just be that instead of just finding beats from everywhere yep. and then it was about pitching around who could do it and really lace up the beats now even though i was one of the candidates also a rap music a couple other producers were thrown in the mix even though it narrowed down to me at the end but um as the time frame started to just dwindle down and it just didn't look like it was going to be able to happen in that time frame roy still wanted to do it no matter what and he was like yo if me and you do it would you still be down to do it mm -hmm. i was like absolutely because i already know how we click yep. in the studio so uh, and then the expectation of us, people who always tweet me, when you and Royce gonna work again? I'm, every time y'all go get together, it's magic. Can, can I say this on camera? Absolutely. I will give my firstborn child for a high quality copy of Ding Ding. <laughs> That's I, just see the quality. That's he all I'm saying. I'm that's all I'm saying. He knows what I'm looking at. He knows what I'm looking at. Look, I want to perform that so man, bad. Because man. Man. when man. Proof died is when we did the song oh, the next man. day. Okay. And when he the what he wrote on it was so touching. I was like, yo, man. Bruh, I, and the way he wrote about how you destroying MCs, but in boxing terms, talk about walking walk with white gloves and leave with red man, ones. I'm like, <laughs> we put that. We put that all right. Yeah, it was the B side to, to hit him. 
Yeah, but it well, I don't, I, the only copy I had of it, it was like a shitty MP3 copy. I got to get you. So if I don't get like if I get that, so I mean, yeah, once we leave here, uh, we're across the street. I, I got my flash drive. Okay, you got your laptop. I'll give yeah, it to yeah. you. Well, but but um, but that, that's what happened. So once Roy said that uh, he wanted to uh, still do the project, if we still had it had it as as an EP of five songs in mind, not as an album. Mm -hmm. So when when uh, when Adrian Young was put into the picture of that's who I had to sample, I was like, no, I want to do it the regular way where I dig for records and find dope beats, and still do it the way we, uh, that Royce wants to do it. But he's like, no. The key is you sample one dude, mm -hmm. his catalog, and make your style of premiere beats to his stuff. So after a few chorus and pushes, uh, and, and Royce's main thing was, you've never done something like this before. Yeah. That's when I was like, you know what, you're right. Mm -hmm. I'm in. And then I met Adrian, and we clicked. You know, After a, f a few conversations with each other and everything, it, it became really good. And then he gave me all his instrumentals to all his catalog and said, take whatever you want and just dice it up. So that was his contribution to it was just giving us the music and then letting me run with it. He wasn't like, hey, you need to do this, you need to do that. He was just like, I can't wait to hear what you do to my shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then from there, uh, Prime was actually the first song we recorded. Yeah. And uh, it was just to test the vibe because I had to start getting into, damn, I'm only going to be sampling this dude. So let me start getting into something that I could actually hook up. So Prime, I just found the parts I like and just really looped it and just put my drums and bass over it and played the bass line on top of his bass line just to beef it up because yeah. it was already really there. Yeah. And then from there, I went to L.A. for, uh, for some business and r right when I'm about to go to uh, Diddy parties are always popping. And, and, it's the go and, 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 it's the go and it's the Golden Globes. <laughs> and Joaquin Phoenix, who was just nominated for, for the Her movie and he, oh, wow. he had Oscar nominated and all that stuff. So I'm like, oh, it's going to be a wild party, which it was. Yes. It was super <laughs> packed dynamite. And, and right when I'm leaving, my email goes off and it's Royce sending the first vocal to listen to. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what, I'll listen to it when I get back to the hotel because I'm going out. And I was like, you know what, let me listen to it now so I can give him an opinion because Royce did, did, wants to know right now. <laughs> I, call, I, I listened to it and I was so blown away with his, the way he formatted and everything. I really wasn't expecting what, I, know, I know he's going to kill it, but he went so many different ways with the, with the, with the, 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 the different you know, personalities and just attitudes in the song. And it didn't have a title, it just said Demo One. So he kept saying Prime in the hook. So I was like, you know what, let me just write Prime, P-R-I-M-E. Then we started cutting the next one, which happened to be You Lose, which, is, which uh, was the one we leaded off to just promote the album. And once we got to that stage, I started working on the next one, which happened to be um, a song called You Should Know, but, but we were just in the rough stages. But right before we cut that, me and Royce started talking, and he said, how about we call our name, ourselves a group instead of Royce 5-9 and DJ Premier as the, as the project, we call ourselves a, a, a group name. And Prime was pitched, and he said, but we're not going to spell it P-R-I-M-E, we're going to spell it capital P, capital R for Premier Royce, and then the H-Y-M-E is for Rhyme. You know, and you're the second one to say P rhyme, which <laughs> prime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I'm but hey, hey, you know what? Hey, hey, yeah, keep, me, keeping man. it hood, <laughs> keeping it hood. P rhyme. <laughs> yeah, P rhyme. It's all gravy. P rhyme. But that's how it all turned out. And then for now, he said, let's just keep plugging that name, plugging that name, not Premier and Royce. And, and now, Prime is really making his name. I wanted to uh, get back to my roots. Uh, what kind of what kind of what made me fall in love with wanting to be an MC, mm -hmm. not an artist, an mm -hmm. MC. And uh, it's this it's this club called Ebony Showcase that we used to go to an open mic every Tuesday when I was around 18, 19 years old. And uh, I just think back of at, at that time where we it, it wasn't about drinking or nothing like that. It was just about going, spitting your rap on Tuesday, going in there signing the list. When they call your name on the list, you go in there and spit your rap, and then Wednesday you write another rap and then memorize it by that following Tuesday. And that was pretty much what your life was, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I wanted to get back to that. I wanted to provide a balance, um, give the new generation that balance of being able to hear a raw album with scratches, raw beats, MCing, no trendy flows, cadences, nothing like that. Just sh <laughs> shit that it just shit. Not nothing, ag not nothing against that, uh -huh. but I think it's very good as long as there's something with it mm -hmm. to balance everything out, you yeah. know. Um, and I think I think that that's kind of what I wanted to do with this. You know, we didn't want to go. We wanted to be in the mind frame of how the artists were back then. Mm -hmm. 
you know what I'm saying? Not to be like the old guys, it's like, this is only good, but it's just, it's a direction to go when we're collaborating, gotcha. me and Prem, since gotcha. he is the architect of that era, that golden era. It's still considered the golden era, and he's one of the architects of that sound, so. Oh man, um, for me, it is, um, I can't say the music, I can't say the, like, the fatherhood. Uh, some people would think like, okay, well, Natural father, you do it. You still curse around your kids? Do you still? And I'm like, bro, like these my kids. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what the fuck you think this is? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, we not just about to be just doing no gratuitous shit around yeah. them, but you know, they gotta know the real world and they gotta know the real me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in my music, you know, for me personally, it's just the thing about well, I want because right now, I mean, my boys are still relatively young; they're 13 and nine, mm -hmm. and so what happens is as you get older you start to you don't see your parents as parents anymore you start to see them as people mm -hmm. and so my hope is that for one day you know when my sons are 20 25 you know they'll look back on my work and say this helps me understand my dad as a person mm -hmm. and you know and hopefully by them understanding me better they will come to understand <clears throat> themselves better because they came from me so um for me, it's just, in the music, it's just all about being as honest as possible. And, you know, when my son asked me, like, yo, was you talking about my mom in that song? Like, yeah, nigga, that was your mom. Like, she, she was on some bullshit that week, man. Like, That's what the fuck it was. We good now. We cool. But that week when I wrote that, yeah, your mom was, she was on some fuck shit. I ain't really fuck about that time. But, you know, but, and he'll understand it. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, that's my hope is just that my music helps them to understand me better as a man and then it can help them understand themselves better as well. Yeah, for me, I have a three-year-old son, so he uh, is funny because he's already in pre-K school and and uh, the bugged out thing is when I have to go, he goes, bye, bye, dad, dad, you going to work? You know what I'm saying? The same thing with his mom. He, he, she's like, mommy, go to work. So even though he doesn't really know what going to work is, yeah. he used to always spaz when I leave. You know, when I leave, he just starts throwing stuff and he doesn't want me to go. Now he is, I gotta go to work. And he goes, okay, love you, but I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad it puts him in an understanding of there's a routine here mm -hmm. that you gotta get used to because I, I have to, I, you know, I'm on the road a lot. Of, and it'll make more sense to him when, after his five, six, seven year old age. But just him seeing the rhythm of it now, he doesn't spaz when I gotta go. You know what I'm saying? Unless I'm gone for a long period of time, and he was like, wait, well, why, why didn't I come back this week? Because he knows I'm going to be coming through. Gotcha. And I'm, I'm, it's three days in a row, and I'm not there. So, you know, the little short things like that. But again, it still puts me in the perspective of focus on re uh, reestablishing the work ethic I had in the 90s. And my work ethic in the 90s, when I was producing a jillion things, was on point. And, you know, I was younger, of course, I was in my 20s, but I was still really, really just nonstop getting songs done in a day. That changed after, you know, the money came and I got comfortable and complacent and thought, OK, well, I ain't, I ain't got no kids. I ain't got no responsibilities. I can still party and hang out. And then you start slowing down. And everybody's waiting for their tracks and I'm taking longer and longer and longer. Then that reputation starts to have people go, oh, well, we can't depend on them. Let's not even call them for one. And then when you start seeing that, you're like, well, damn. I don't want that to happen because I'm still hot. But it's not the, the them doubting the hotness. It's about them saying, well, you know, I can't rely on getting something from you that I paid for. So that put that reestablished once I once I had a, had a kid, you know. So uh, it made, made it made things right for me. It was necessary. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, I try not to let uh, as a as a creative person, I try not to let anything distract me. Mm -hmm. How much money I can make off of something or what my girl is gonna think, none of that when I'm making music. <clears throat> now, outside of the booth, how they feel in mind with my actions gotcha. as a man, you know what I mean? Like, like I try to keep them in my brain, somewhere in the front of my brain where I'm always thinking about them, just to keep myself out of trouble. Mm -hmm. How old are your kids? How old are you? 17, 7, oh, 6, yeah. and 4 yeah. months. So your, so your 17 year old I know is like on social media and like yeah, all yeah, that yeah. shit. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, yeah, I, that's my yeah, struggle. Cause it's, yep. we're, so your kids be tweeting you sometimes? Like, my kid, nah, they don't, don't tweet me. I don't, I don't have that problem. Nah, nah, I don't have that problem either. I don't, problem. Problem. But I don't it's, think that's cool. They, I don't think they think that's cool. Tweeting? Oh, tweeting, tweeting your dad. dad. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, dad, you're uncool. They're not going to tweet dad. Like, I don't give a fuck who you use with M, whoever, nigga, you daddy. Like, fuck out of here. Exactly. Nobody want to tweet they daddy, nigga. But, you know, but nah, so it's, nah, I don't think that happened, but I, but I feel you because for me, the, what's interesting is like now, as my son, as he gets older, like, you see that, you know, they can Google your name just like anybody else can. Yeah. And so, 
you know, what you said, it really spoke to me, what you just said about how, you know, you want, you know, how the way they see you, because there's total kind of transparency now. Like if you do some fuck shit and end up on TMZ, yeah. Yeah. they're yeah. going to be talking about it and they're going to go to school and their friends oh, going to yeah. be talking about it. And it's just like, you gotta, really got to watch how you move now. I got to go home to them, you know, mm -hmm. I got to go home to them and I want my word to be law. Mm -hmm. I want my word to be disrespected. You know, I want to be able to tell him, this is what I need you to do. And I want to be able to stand by it. And he respects it in a way where he feels like, all right, well, this is all my daddy would get down to. Yep. I can't be like, yo, you can't be doing this. And then it'd be like, well, damn, dad, you just, <laughs> what you, you doing? Just on media take <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, so uh, it's a, it's a man thing. You know, you got to be a man. You got to be a man at the end of the day. And that we sometimes forget that as artists, okay. you know, so. I never thought I'd be at the stage where I'm still active and people are going, yo, I grew up on you, man. When I was, when I was four, I'm like, four? You know what I'm saying? Like, are you sure? Because I'm like, four years old, okay, you wasn't in kindergarten yet. And you grew what up on me, yeah. 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 Like, even when I say certain albums, yeah, well, Daily Operation came out in 92. That's my third album. <laughs> yeah, that's probably. <laughs> I get that all the time. I'm like, damn, man, all right. My mom used to play play your stuff when she was lullaby me to sleep. I'm like, damn. <laughs> but, but I mean, it's dope. I mean, yeah, I remember the first time I met Mac Miller, and he was just like, yo, you know, I, I, I heard you on a Big L record, and that made me listen to more of your production because Big L would always big you up and this and that. And, you know, and, and did those little things, like even somebody like a Mac Miller, who at that time, uh, which Royce and I have said uh, in this conversation, you know, at back at that time, I didn't think his rhyming skill was on the level that it is now. You know, he's really has stepped up his, his rhyme game. Come from back when I met him, but for him to say Big L is one of the people that inspired him to rap is a big step. Right there, same thing with Joey Badass. I saw an article on him. I saw his, his video for, uh, um, for I saw the video for Survival Tactics. I was like, damn, he's some little hard little motherfuckers. And then all of a sudden, I see this brand new interview, and they're like, what made you want to rap? He said, Gangstar's Moment of Truth album. And that was his answer. I'm like, damn, you know, that's what made you want to rap? Because he was doing art and all this other stuff, because he got, you know, comes from an art school. And he said, that's what wanted him to want to pick up a mic and start writing rhymes. So Moment of Truth is one of the most important Gangstar albums ever, because we were both going through a really, really tough time in our, li in our personal lives, and we pulled the album off, you know, with Guru facing five years in jail. And, 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 and during the time that the album was going to be released. So a lot he was going through, even what he said he was scared and all that on Moment of Truth, the song, all that was really happening. And we and headquarters, you know, we had a, uh, headquarters just died. And, you know, we just lost a lot of people who had died right when the album was getting ready to come out. So we were just all a mess. Mm -hmm. And the album, that was our first gold album that we never gotten a gold or platinum plaque. And that was our first one. So that, that, was, that was big. Guru designed the plaques and everything. So we have it on the wall at the studio. I'm I'm down. I mean, you know, I I'm I'm just here. I leave in the morning in the morning. But uh, nah, I mean, these two brothers, you know, it's back. it's something. Oh yeah, I mean, it's it ain't even a question. It's like you need me on something. You know, he sent me something to ride to. It was like, dude, just, sent it right back like a G. Yeah, it's like you know what I mean. Yeah, so it's not a question. You know, it's and people always ask. You know, because I'm not a person that collabs a lot. Like I just don't. I'm fucking over that shit. You yeah. know what I mean? So you know, for me, people always ask me, well, what is it about? You know, collabing, like, what does it take to get you to collab? Is it about money? Is it about this? I got this. And it's like, man, for me, it's not about bread. It's not about, you know, any of that. It's just about respect. It's about something. You want to be a part of something great. You know what I mean? And I think that, you know, just as artists now, just coming up, you just want to be a part of something that you know will stand the test of time. You know what I mean? And so whenever I get any kind of call from these dudes, it's, it's not even a question. It's just like, what is it? Send it to me. I'm knocking it out in, in this without question. So, you know, it, uh, it it just is particularly knowing, I mean, growing up on this guy <laughs> and, you know. Since just, you were four? Not since I was four. I ain't that old. You know what I mean? I, well, you're not that old. I mean, shit. I'm, but I'm, not really, I'm getting up there. I'll be 50 in two years. Oh, shit. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, like, old. I'm on four, but nah. <laughs> Stephanie Arena, because Stephanie Arena was, what, 90? 90, yep. I was 11. Okay. So that was like one of the first CDs I bought, like when the shit was in the long yeah, box. Yeah, like the, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 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 I always wonder, what's at the bottom of the box? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was one of the first CDs I actually bought with Stephanie Arena. Right. But, um, but now, man, you know, it's just about wanting to do something great. So anytime these brothers call me and, you know, just to see Preem still here, you know, years after, you know what I'm saying, what he did in the 90s and just how he influenced all of us and, you know, knowing Royce and just knowing, you know, 
his personal struggles he went through, seeing him find his lane, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because um, it was, you know, it's good to see niggas shining now, but I'm sure you can, like, attest, like, it wasn't a time in hip hop for a minute where lyrics were yeah, really yeah. respected. Like yeah, it yeah. was, you know, like that ringtone shit. Like it was like niggas yeah. actually rapping. Yeah, that wasn't happening for a while. So mm -hmm. now to you, for you to weather all of that, and now you have venues where people would just actually listen to niggas rap with the battles or how y'all can do a fucking fifteen minute slaughterhouse battle, like mm -hmm. cipher. You know what I mean? Like nigga, ten years ago that was not happening. Right. Nobody mm -hmm. gave a fuck about yeah. lyrics. So, um, yeah, right, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, right. It wasn't that long. It wasn't that long. It was last year. Yeah. <laughs> just last nice. week, nigga. So, nah, so, you know, it's, I'm, I'm just, you know, happy to be a part of everything. And anything these brothers need, they want to go to the studio now, they want to send me, email me something next week. I'm there. It's not even, it ain't no question at all. Likewise. Likewise, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yes. I have daddy detail today. So, <laughs> so I was going to have to push back this week. So I was like, I got to catch one day in this week. So we're still doing promo. We're on a promo run, which That's is right. You already know how it goes. We still have a couple more stops and been doing all the TVs and campaigning, kissing babies and, mm -hmm. you know, and then uh, saying go buy that album. And it is in store right now. Prime. Yes. Then it, vinyl, C it. CD, it. digital, and we will be working on a bonus album with, with some extra tracks. Can't say the names, but we're going to be on it. Bonus album. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bonus yeah. album. Yeah. Yeah. Can I get in on that? Can yeah. I get in on that? Can I? Can Here we go. Here we go. Can I keep saying that, but he ain't setting no beat shit. <laughs> <laughs> he got one. He got one. He got one. He did send one. Yeah, but but uh, <laughs> but we 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 I know. We we reached out to a couple of artists that are very rare to get. Mm -hmm. Just like Jay Lonic, the Jay Electronic was was rare to get. Mm -hmm. There's some other rare artists that are that are not easy to get that said yes, and we just we're gonna do those and start working on, on the, the bonus album. Awesome. Well, you know three songs doing? for sure, maybe five, but three for sure. Okay. I want any, any time frame on when that yes. Yes, um, we're, looking for, we're looking for we're looking for February. Yeah. We're looking for February, so we let the regular, regular album do what it does, and then we talk about doing like a limited edition forty five box set oh, of all the original album with the instrumentals and the new songs with the instrument on the B side of each forty five. Right, right. Only and, and digital, of course. Oh shit! Can't wait for that, man. Yeah, Can't but let's let that. the other then. Thanks everybody that's been supporting it already. You know we. We already started off with a good day, not week of sales, a good day of sales. Mm -hmm. uh, it just came out, you know, December 9th, and, you know, so far so good. So thanks to everybody that supported us, and, um, and uh, we, we got a lot more to do.